Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, right, some of you guys might have already seen some of my videos on these uh, swim spas. If you haven't, do go and check it out. The link at the top of the screen here. But today we're going to do a little maintenance job. Um, I will be loading lots of maintenance jobs related to this pool as well. We're also going to do a surface pool repair video very shortly, so keep an eye out for that. But today, what we have on the pool here is a small issue, which is a heat pump flow error appearing on our control panel here. Now. Most likely it is the uh, flow sensor, which is this little unit here. This is a new replacement unit, and we're going to open up the heat pump unit here and fit a new flow sensor and do a couple of checks along the way. So keep watching and I'll show you how this is done. So if we actually take a look at the control panel here, you'll see now the um, error message being displayed, uh, which is a heat pump fault error. So before we continue, actually, I'll just show you a bit of a close-up of the um, the flow sensor switch here. Basically, it's just a, a long plastic paddle here, which goes inside your pipe into the heat pump. And when there's a water flow, obviously, it drags that sideways, and it clicks a small little micro switch inside the unit here. Um, they've gone with a physical uh, switch type setup here. Um, some smaller uh, hot tubs and, and pools in the heat pump units use a little optical sensor. Um, it would have been nice if they could have had an optical sensor in, in this setup here, um, a lot more robust and less likely to have a fault uh, than a physical mechanical switch like this. But this is what we've got to work with, so let's carry on with this one. Okay, so if you're going to do a job like this, it is quite handy to have your service documentation or some uh, documents that show physically where all the components are in a, in a heat pump like this. In this case, I do have that, so I know that the uh, flow sensor is just up under here somewhere. Um, but if you don't have it, you can still usually take the units open and find this sort of thing relatively easy. So I'm going to take this top off right now, and then we'll have a closer look inside here. Okay, so we've got the cover off now, uh, main top cover, and I can see straight away our flow switch sensor is right here. So we're actually going to be able to get at that pretty easy and just pull it out and pop a new one in. The only problem is we've got the cable uh, going into the control unit that goes up under here, so I'll just have to take this cover off as well. Now just remember, if you're doing any of this, you want to make sure all your power's turned off and you know exactly what you're doing here as well, of course, because you're talking dangerous mains voltage here. Okay, so we've got the um, cover off the control panel here, and straight away, pretty much, I have found the water flow sensor switch connection point right here. So that's our cable running out and across. Of course, it does run through all these cable ties here and out through the unit down underneath here and through up to the actual sensor. So I'm going to have to get my little side clippers and cut quite a few cable ties here uh, just to be able to get that existing cable out and then fit the new one in. A little bit fiddly, it's going to be tight, but uh, we should be able to do that fairly quickly. Uh, obviously we want to be very careful that we don't cut anything other than our little cable ties. So let's give that a go right now. Just to make things a bit easier, I've taken this side panel off as well, it's just about three screws on the side, it was very quick, and I've cut all the um, cable ties, securing the uh, sensor connection, so we've removed the sensor connection for the cable, and just gently pull that existing cable through the body of our heat pump unit, and there we go. So now we've got the existing uh, sensor cable out completely and we'll try and do a little swap over of the sensor and see how wet we're going to get. Okay so we've got our new flow sensor here ready to put in place all lined up in exactly the same angle. Um, now I do actually have cutoff valves uh, in the pool area to stop the water flow here but I'm actually not going to use them because I think this is going to be a pretty quick swap over but also I actually want to see the water flow pumping coming out of this um, sense area just to confirm that there is uh, definitely a good flow of water coming through here and it's, and it's not a different issue to the actual uh, sensor flow. So let's see if we can swap it out. And there we go. So uh, 
a little bit of water came out there, but not too bad. I've got that, I'll just tighten that up a little bit more in a moment. Um, you'll notice I did actually put a cover over our um, electrical area here just to stop any water flowing in there when I did that. So um, I'll tighten that up and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, now uh, before we continue, I just have got my hand in there and just by hand tightened up the, um, the fitting of the flow sensor here onto the, um, onto the hole here where it's fitted into. And just bear in mind that that flow sensor does need to be refitted pointing exactly the same direction as the old one we took out because the flow is going to be going in, in the same direction. So that's really critical. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to cable tie the... Um, this uh, sensor cable back, actually I'm not going to cable tie the um, sensor cable for this uh, flow sensor back in, I'm just going to cable tie all the main ones because the flow sensor that we've removed and it's clearly, um, that is definitely the issue, this is very sort of working very erratically here and that's definitely worn out so it's only it's only about two years old this setup so a little bit disappointing that um, that flow sensor is only lasting two years but what I'm saying is that down the track uh, we may find that we need to replace a flow sensor again within two or three years so you don't really want to put all too many cable ties in this um, the cable set up here so I'm going to make it relatively easy to remove it the next time okay so we've put cable ties back into all our main cable looms here uh, but as I say I've kept the um, sensor cable here for the flow sensor just loose and it's just neatly coiled here and we've plugged into the control port here. I did take photos of this when I removed it just to make sure we're putting the uh, there's not really going to be a polarity on this anyway uh, and most of these connectors only go in one way so just making sure that's gone back in in the same position so we can now um, make sure everything's dry in there and put this control unit cover on and then we'll put a couple of more covers back on and then we'll give it a test and here we go with the um, New flow sensor fitted and the unit powered up again. Uh, everything is running fantastically. No error messages. And away we go with uh, pool heating again. All right, there we go. Uh, looks like luck is on my side. It's just about to start raining again. Um, but I've put the covers back on the heat pump unit and we've powered the unit up with the pool and shazam it's all working perfectly again fantastic no error messages here on our control panel so the faulty um, flow sensor switch was definitely the problem and the issue here so it was really a relatively straightforward fix probably only a 25 to 30 minute job uh, took me a bit longer because of course I was making this video for you guys so again I hope this has uh, been useful information for you guys please do um, like and subscribe if you found this useful uh, and check out my other videos uh, on the swim spa here and on my other maintenance tips for these pools. Thanks for watching.